Damn, welcome back, Uno Night. And bro, if you're wondering how my Velana summons went. Oh, damn. Let me just see this. <laughs> you know? Oh. Oh. At least we finally have Velana, right? Savior. Yeah, I don't know about that one. Bro? Huh? Yeah, I wasn't really the luckiest, was I? This isn't a should you summon or not, but here's proper advice that doesn't have an extreme viewpoint. If 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 you lack a good source of DPS, Velana can cover that very easily because she actually does good DPS, even better than I initially thought, right? Because we finally have her stats now. And the fact that she is on raid up means that you'll be able to do proud more and benefit from her very quickly. Otherwise, it'll be up to you if you want to pull for her or not, right? It's just the thing is I have to fight two sides, bro. The Velana over Hyper saying she's the best unit in the game just because of her ultimate, which I never said and I don't agree with. And those that say that Velana is below average, which is completely, completely false. So the best description one could possibly give for Velana is that she is a good unit, but not that good, right? Because of all her flaws. Uh, she does do a lot of damage, right? You know, but it's completely locked up by so many conditions, making her inconsistent. However, it is because of this inconsistency that makes her unable to push harder content consistently. Apart from this, you know, she straight up sucks in Arena, but she is one of the best in Labyrinth. Her kit lacks in clearing stages 15 onwards consistently, although doable. She's fantastic in the early game, but inconsistent later on, basically. Um, she's actually a lot stronger than I thought she was, just because I completely forgot about one factor. And yeah, that just means she's even better than I thought she was. Now, people are keep saying that she is going, going to be only useful with Ayame, but then in terms of fat numbers, her most that she can actually get theoretically is with Rebecca. Okay. <laughs> Because of Rebecca's plus 50% dot, which we'll get into in a bit. This plus 50% obviously applies to her uncurable bleed, which is absolutely bonkers. I actually only realized this when I was doing her an undead gate yesterday, which is now already higher than my fairy gate. And keep in mind, this is me using Velana at Epic, and I literally have an origin Talia. Now I'm just, you know, people say it's a skill issue. No, those, who's, those who say I have a skill issue are also the same ones who say Velana is mediocre, like ult, and which is completely false because... If you're only getting mediocre damage with her ult, you're the one with the skill issue, bro. Respectfully. Okay? So, when it comes to attack, her base attack is actually very... Uh, okay, to be honest. Uh, it is higher than Mika, which is another warrior. And... What's her name? When it comes to Lindsay, has more as well. So, she actually has decent uh, attack for a warrior. Lagging behind Haru, though, definitely. Within 56,000? Bro... <laughs> We'll take that. <laughs> That's actually pretty high for a warrior, now that I think about it. And she only gets 5,000 extra from her artifact, which is completely fine. By the way, her base is 51,000. This 56k only happens once you've maxed out her artifact, right? So these are the stats with the artifact, and that's why it's in the picture book. Uh, defense, 25,499. Second only to Aira in the warrior class, which means she is pretty tanky. That does not mean she is an off tank. She is a DPS unit, melee DPS unit, hence warrior. Okay. Um... She has lots of HP as well, uh, very comparable, if I remember correctly, Catherine 664k, yeah, 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 so very comparable to Catherine in terms of that, and crit rate 0%, which is very unfortunate, but then at the same time, you know what, it makes her completely balanced, right, because um, when it comes to crit rate, uh, you could, for if, if for some reason you want to fix that, um, use her in Labyrinth for fun, <laughs> she's actually very fun to play with in Labyrinth, and you could just use Geo, right, so no worries. Uh, Human-like characters, you know, tend to increase your crit rate. Uh, crit damage is actually really good, 54.7%. Now, obviously, this is bad on paper because Vivian has like 90.6%, right? But then the thing is, um, damn, how do I memorize this? Uh, she gets 60% crit rate at Origin, so that's already 114.7% extra crit damage. And then, sorry, I'm going too fast. Her keepsake, uh, if you get this crit set and then you have four of this, you do get 30% extra. And I'm not sure you can get extra crit damage, but th that means theoretically your crit damage can be an upwards of 147.7% damage, which is absolutely bonkers. Because that means our multiplier for every crit is 
2.47 2.447 there we go so yeah that's why she's even stronger than i initially thought she would be again all assuming this is maximum right uh so already without a doubt she already has the most damage in the game for a full screen ult uh, but then here's the thing all right this is the part where the uh, villana haters are actually okay with uh the reason why they keep saying her ult is mediocre is because it's very inconsistent and they're not getting the damage they want but again end of the day it's a skill issue on their end right keep in mind that the damage numbers on this ult are very inconsistent and you'll see in just a second this is why you do not want to be ulting on her every single time because of inconsistency and actual lack of utility it is an ult with few utility, meaning you may want to use other units' as ult just for their utility sometimes. So you need to know when to use her ultimate. Um, the thing is, all right, I have all the stats for you here, right? Again, this is all going to be based off her attack percent, which is completely fine. So, assuming no bleed, the thing with her ultimate is, if it's no bleed, we already know it's not going to crit. So what does that mean? 280%, and we won't get the additional 180%. So we already have 280%, right? Plus 65% of her attack times 6 because it's every turn for 12 seconds. What does that mean? 280 plus 390%. What does that give us? 670% without Rebecca. Okay. Ooh, now we're talking about Rebecca. And it has a stun for 3 seconds. Uh... Oh, wait. No, sorry. This is an extra effect, right? We're not going to talk about the stun here. We're just going to be talking about the damage. So... Without Rebecca, this is 670%. Worst case scenario, by the way. Yes, impact is weak. It's pretty much relative to Nias, but then, you know, that's a lot of damage either way from the damage over time because it is not cleansable. Okay, keep that in mind. It's not cleansable. Now, with Rebecca, you add another 185% to this, which is top of my head, 855% damage, no bleed. <sighs> if the enemy's not bleeding yet, right? So that's crazy. Now, here's the thing. If the enemy is bleeding already, without Rebecca, this is 460% times 2.447 plus 390%. This is 1,515.62% damage of her attack if the enemy is already bleeding, right? Obviously, on impact, you remove the 390%, right? Just so you guys know, you remove the 390%, which is still the highest we have in the entire game right now with rebecca this is 920 oh, sorry not 920 460 times 2.447 plus 575 percent damage you know what that's gonna give us 1700 percent damage bro like <laughs> wait did i say that right so just double check plus 195 yeah seven one thousand seven hundred and ten percent damage with rebecca so yes but then again keep in mind this is the maximum output and the fact that there are so many things happening there's like six different possibilities or like six different types of damage we're gonna get that's why people are saying Velana's is mediocre but she clearly isn't now we'll just go jump straight into her skills because uh this is very interesting Sadly, her kit's kind of bad because she only has one bleed and she doesn't even have bleed on her main, so you can't go main into ultimate. Which, the reason why that's really bad is because it makes her a lot worse than she's supposed to be. If this thing had bleed, then she'd be uh, like 10 times stronger than we already had thought, right? Alright, so Wild Dance, uh, this is one of the biggest reasons why people don't like her. It's because they wanted her to pierce. Now, the reason they wanted her to pierce is because as a DPS unit, you kind of want to burst down the back line which Naya is very good at because she already has decent attack stat okay crit rate and crit damage but then the thing is she literally has two skills that target the highest attack unit on the game plus her own full screen ultimate which is absolutely fantastic sadly Vilana doesn't do that so we were hoping she would dash to the back so that she you know she claps some prim cheeks right um so yeah that's the biggest problem with her uh, multipliers aren't even that good either but then that's because she has very high crit damage multipliers so if you get this this is like 10 times stronger than she's supposed to be basically yes she almost does like don't quote me on this but then roughly a quarter of the damage she's supposed to if the enemy's not bleeding so that is the biggest issue with her kit now her sub soaring hatred this is her only source of bleed 2.5 meter radius if you're wondering how big this is this is literally the size of Catherine's. Uh, what do you call this? I think it's Agnes Day or is it Gloria? Oh, credo. <laughs> I didn't get either, right? C, 2.5 meter range. It just means 2.5 meter radius, which is absolutely crazy. Right? Nothing big, nothing too small. 
Uh, okay. Uh, 2.5 million radius as well for Swirling Frenzy, which is... But I mean, if you already know the size at this point, that's pretty good. Right? So it also increases her physical and magical resistance by 30%, which is something to keep in mind because physical and magical resistance is very important, meaning she can easily self-sustain, obviously assuming that you have enough dupes of her. Now, she does work well even without that many dupes, but then end of the day, she is a DPS unit, so you want more dupes of her because she actually benefits off all attack defense and hp she actually benefits of all three obviously not in obviously indirectly not directly i keep burping bro excuse me so yeah you would want that now when it comes to her passive seething obsession 40 percent, which is okay i mean that's pretty good uh life still increased by 40 percent. now she has zero percent so bringing that up to 40 percent, which is really good meaning apart from her ult that doing so much damage off her, the bleed if those enemies were already bleeding beforehand, her ult becomes like a hundred times better. Now again, for anyone crying, no, this does not mean she is the best unit in the game. Again, she has so many flaws. Her damage is very inconsistent. She won't deal as much as you want her to if you don't have units such as say Ayame who will consistently bleed for her because Ayame does have three bleeds built into her kit with main, sub, and ultimate. Sadly, you're not gonna use this. So these are realistically your only sources of bleed, the sub and the main skill. <sighs> Mm, it's okay sadly encroaching knight doesn't do bleed so that's one thing to keep in mind now i don't like the fact that people are pairing her with jacqueline because jacqueline's only source of bleed is the main now the reason i want the bleed to actually be on the sub skills because this for the most part each turn rotation is 20 seconds meaning that uh, a unit will use the sub skills four times in a run assuming you make it till the end so yeah you kind of want that right right so now when it comes to team synergies i've already mentioned everything the last time bro but then you see the issue is people keep thinking oh i have to completely build my team around Vilana, so i need rebecca and ayame the thing is no you could actually work with only one of them the reason i found this out was actually because of undead gate i was like wait a minute why is Vilana doing decent damage and i realized it's because of rebecca i was like why is her, why is her bleed doing so much damage for an epic unit it's because of this dawn all right shout out rebecca she a real one still <laughs> sorry i was hanging out with my mates today in london so it's rubbing off of me i don't have the british accent though sadly then i am a again source of bleed so no my recommendation is only pick one of them this isn't building your team around your one character right because end of the day you're always building your team around one dps unit or you're always building your team around one unit that you need right so that's why it is a team you work you, you work your way around all of them right not just one unit that's why you find units that work with each other not just for one unit because i've mentioned this before if you if you make all your units just work for velana if velana is dead that's it gg go next right ff right so guys if that video was helpful for you please uh do consider subscribing because i'll be able to pump up more content such as this and with even higher quality right with more research as well so velana definitely is one of the best dps units in the game because People who disagree fail to realize that it's because they think of units such as Mephi, Vivian, Naya, and those units, right? But then keep in mind that when you compare it to units such as, uh, say, Flynn, Jade, who else can I think of? Uh, Flynn, Jade, Violet, and the others, you know, she's clearly outclassing them and seeing more playtime, right? So, yeah, again, she struggles in the later stages because of her kit and lack of evasion for a non-tank unit. But then you could still make it work. All right maybe not viable in stage 16 stage 15 but then for the current for most players she is very good and if you have origin plus five then it's completely rectified right so there are many people like trashing her or praising her without actually teaching you how to use her so hopefully this was all the info you need to know how to use velana and oh before i go uh i personally think chloe is the best tank with her just because of the fact that she can taunt and clump them all up and since velana is like skills have like so little range uh, it'll be very beneficial if they're all clumped up together and chloe helps out with that so yeah i'll see you in the next one